Coming up on Digital Music Trends 161 on the 11th of December 2013, Spotify launches a free service for tablet and mobile users, a music holiday gift guide, streaming services consolidation, Beatport layoffs, a Pandora alarm clock and multi-platform apps. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends. I'm Andrea Linelli and this is the weekly show where we talk about and try to make sense of the latest news in the digital music industry. And DMT is available as audio and video on a variety of channels including iTunes, most podcasters, YouTube, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio and Audioboo. To get in touch with the show you can tweet us on at Music Trends or email on contact at digitalmusictrends.com. And uh, this week we have some news on the website actually. First of all, uh, DMT has a new uh, monthly subscription option uh, for the website so uh, I've had a few emails of people that wanted to support the show and I didn't have really a way for them to do that so it's completely you know uh, voluntary so if you guys uh, uh, love the show and want to help out there's like four different levels of, of subscriptions it's super simple unfortunately PayPal based uh, but uh, that's uh, you know uh, how it goes at the moment and if you opt in for the gold and platinum levels uh, which is kind of a kickstarter type thing uh, you can get your name on the end credits of the show so that's uh, <laughs> a cool thing that you can do if you like the show and uh, this week I'm really happy to welcome three Three great guests, uh, starting with Duncan Gear, a freelance journalist uh, writing on uh, music, environment, space, and weather. Uh, so, <laughs> hi, Duncan, it's great to have you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's awesome to have you back. And uh, then we have Virginie Berger, a founder of digital marketing agency Don't Believe the Hype. So, hi, Virginie. Hi, good to be here. And uh, uh, finally, Dave Allen, uh, who is uh, currently director of insights at digital media uh, uh, agency. Uh, sorry, uh, director of insights and digital media at uh, North.com, and is also uh, a junk professor on digital brand strategy at, at the University of Oregon, and uh, was bass player uh, is bass player in the uh, British post punk outfit Gang of Four. So, hi, Dave, and great to have you on. How's it going? Great. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. It's uh, great to have you back, and we're going to kick off today's uh, uh, show. It's it's kind of uh, it's happening every week that we have like a breaking news and we have to jump on it, which is quite fun. It makes it it makes it feel like a, a real like sort of news show, like TV TV style. Uh, so uh, the Spotify announcement happened literally like an hour ago, uh, and uh, there were a few interesting things that were announced. Most of them had actually leaked before the announcement happened, so we sort of knew what was going to happen, but we know a few more details now. So uh, Spotify becomes free for. Uh, uh, tablet users uh, as uh, in the desktop version so you're going to be able to play tracks on demand uh, with advertising and it also becomes free for mobile although for mobile you're only going to be able to listen to tracks in shuffle mode so uh, if you search for an artist you're going to be able to listen to a specific artist in shuffle so randomly and uh, you can also select a specific playlist and listen to that playlist in shuffle which has led to already some speculations that you could have a playlist with just five six tracks on that and just listen to those to those on repeat uh, but uh, so it's uh, that's the first big item of news that I want to talk about because it's very significant it kind of puts Spotify in a very different place to where it is now where it, it hasn't quite managed to break into the younger demographic so uh, let's start with Dave from a US perspective uh, do you think that this move will allow Spotify to move into that younger demographic before it's swept by a YouTube music service um, that's interesting actually I, I'm surprised to hear that you say it's um, struggling with a younger demographic is that true I mean anecdotally I I mean, I've seen a few graphs uh, where uh, Spotify definitely had the edge on the sort of 20-year-old plus uh, mm. audience. Um, and I think oh, a lot I, of teens use YouTube as their main source at the moment because it's free on mobile as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, well, I think we know pretty clearly now that YouTube is the biggest music platform out there, really. Um, and I'm sure that teenagers use that. Well, I, I, I pretty much know I, I've been around teenagers. I've had some teenagers till I asked them to leave the house. <laughs> but, um, um, uh, <laughs> they, that's that's how they always got their music. That's for sure. Uh, I, I think that you know any now, now that we understand that you know from a, a society perspective that um, people definitely are less interested in buying music and uh, something I've talked about a lot is like they 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 prefer to rent it as it were, whether you pay the subscription. I, I think. I use Spotify Premium, and I'm amazed at how good it is. Um, but um, the ads in the stream thing, that's still complicated. But you're right. I think pushing it to mobile where young people are, for sure, um, will surely help them out. Um, yeah. Did you have you already covered the uh, Spotify for artists news? I presume. Yeah, we did that last week. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so it's sort of it's part of a, an interesting wave of news from the company, but. Uh, uh, Duncan, from your end, you know, do you feel like there, 
there is a need for Spotify to do this, given the upcoming competition next year by uh, more services coming into play and other services becoming more aggressive in the space? Well, I think the real motivation here is is exactly what Daniel X said on stage. It's it's basically that people are right. stopping buying PCs. Um, there's you know more and more people are signed to use their tablets in place of PCs. PC sales are going through the floor. This is mm. why they're doing it really, and they've managed to quite successfully convince the the rights holders that a tablet is an equivalent to a PC right. rather than being equivalent to a mobile. And that's a very very distinct difference in how things have operated in digital music in the past. So it'll be really interesting to see whether other services follow suit in the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Virginia, do you think, uh, you know, as Duncan says, it's, it's, uh, it was, a, I'm sure, a tough conversation for Spotify to have with the rights holders to, to convince them that this was a good move. And the fact that Daniel Ack also remarked that the advertising is not going to be more uh, it's going to be at, at the same frequency as on the desktop version for the mobile version. Uh, it's, it's definitely interesting. Do you feel like Spotify's cloud helped them get to this deal and do you think that you know is Deezer uh, available on mobile at all uh, for free or do you have to pay uh, no you have to pay right for Deezer yeah, yeah you have to pay yeah it's it's a, it's a very very interesting uh, move and it's very very um, a big difference compared to Deezer and compared to Beats Music but we don't know <laughs> what's happening with Beats yeah, uh, exactly. and uh, and maybe with YouTube um, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting move. I'm not sure about you know advertising during the <laughs> the shuffle and mobile and everything. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not convinced. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting move for young people. And um, um, you know when you compare um, with other services as as Deezer, with Deezer it's very complicated, especially in France because of the connection. Right. Uh, you know you you can't have a mobile connection in the um, subways and everywhere in Paris and so yeah that's good yeah. we'll see uh, we have to see you know what what will happen with the uh, shuffle mode and yeah. uh, and uh, commercials because yeah I'm not sure we shuffle <laughs> no, Sasha, you make a really good point yeah. actually uh, 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 has anybody because I picked want to up... choose my music yeah oh. I mean that's that's a fact, but also like I guess you know they had to put some restrictions on it, otherwise it would have been so expensive. But I don't know if yeah. any, any of you guys or, or Duncan, if you've picked up, I haven't picked up any uh, info on whether there's going to be any caching of the music on the mobile device. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of kind of offline listening, yeah, yeah, offline uh, is still going to be a premium only feature right. from what I from everything yeah. that I know. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to need a, like a always connect the device to be able to enjoy the music on mobile but but then again you know a lot of people use their mobile devices in the home anyway so it's uh, it's not so much of a case of using it while yeah, you're 20 20 percent of, uh, of the internet connection it's through mobile so it's very yeah. very important yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah i'm an ipad user in, at home with the spotify app premium yeah, yeah. um interesting yeah you know this this free thing's interesting i i i'm beginning to feel that um um, Spotify will be in this for the, the long run. I think the, the quality of the service and the value um, is enough to keep people constantly using that service. Um, I think the Beats model is going to arrive with no nothing free, which would be really interesting. Um, I've been talking in the back channels to some people there, and um, I think you know they see it more as a premium service, uh, rather like cable TV as well. You know, you just don't. If you don't start with free, um, you don't have to end up with free. Yeah. Uh, that, so that's that's an interesting model, uh, you know, because suddenly it, it looks like the big players here will be Spotify, Beats, and YouTube Music. Um, I've been talking to Google Music as well. It's been, it's the, you know, I think we're beginning to see um, new thinking around what's happening based on what people want. Yeah. And uh, you know, like the ads in the stream thing, man, oh man, that that you know, in mobile. Uh, that's that's just essentially disruptive. It's really strange mm. that uh, you'd want to go there. Yeah. But mm. at the same time, if you're trying to attract, you know, it's like the 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 Chris Anderson freemium model. Like you get people on board for free, they get tired of the ads, but they like the service so much, then they may step up to the nine ninety nine a month in the you know the US price anyway. Yeah, and I'd love to some, for somebody to do a study. I mean, I, I'd love to do it myself actually on looking at how. Uh, the advertising side of it is developing at Spotify because now they've rolled out uh, another part of the news is that they rolled out in 20 more countries, uh, especially in uh, Latin America and a few more countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in, because this, this new feature is rolling out worldwide, so I'm really interested in seeing what kind of adverts they are broadcasting to those territories. 
Are they mm. language specific? Are they specific to the territory? Do, you, do they have agencies that produce adverts in every single territory they're in? Because uh, now that you know they are sort of in the, I think forty or fifteen territories worldwide. Uh, I don't know. Fifty-five. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yep. I didn't have an updated number. Fifty-five. So, okay. Yep. So that's a lot of territories to manage ad inventory for, and uh, uh, but you, you have to have decent ad invent inventory for for people to actually keep listening to, to to Spotify. So yeah. I mean that's that's part of the reason why they still haven't made a profit because they're trying to push out growth in all of these markets all at once. They're opening ad agencies and, and little local offices in all of these countries. That's what's costing them the money. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so, sense. I mean, you can't you can't run uh, English speaking ads in in Sao Paulo for you know in, in Portuguese. You have to. <laughs> I mean, that, that's my world here at North. You know, we <laughs> we are we hire people in in foreign countries to yeah. adapt, adapt the ads, not just uh, the language. It's to look at, yeah. So you know what 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 it looks like. You know, it's like you can offend people really quickly if you start pushing hard um, just in English. Uh, MTV yeah. found that back in the eighties when they. Came to France with American VJ. <laughs> awesome. no. you, you have to speak one. French in France. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I, I, my French is very rudimentary, but uh, yeah. I, I get by without being assaulted by waiters. You know. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Local, localization is the key, and you have to you have to speak the language, local, local language, and um, uh, in terms of music, it's the same thing. Uh, you have to build a catalog with uh, with local music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in South America and you know Asia, or even in France. It's going to be the big challenge because I mean, if you look at the yeah. charts on Spotify, uh, the worldwide charts, I was looking at the 2013 report they did, which is a gorgeous presentation of uh, the 2013. Ah. 2013 on Spotify. It was a very nice presentation on Spotify's blog. If you, if the listeners want to go and check it out, if they haven't seen it already, and you can actually browse country by country the top tracks and top artists, and mm -hmm. they are virtually the same in every single country uh, yeah, in the world. Uh, which is kind of weird because I think on the actual charts, when you look at sales, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So you wonder why? Is it because Spotify's users are more leaning towards international? Is it because Spotify doesn't have all the local catalog that comes out? Uh, I'd love to know what the reasons are behind there being a, a, quite a homogeneity of content in the top uh, artists worldwide. But when you look at the actual sales charts, there's actually quite a few local artists that are, are making starts there as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting stuff. Uh, Dave, one thing I wanted to ask you: you're a subscriber to Spotify as well. I was kind of annoyed because I haven't launched any new features for existing subscribers. So, like, mm -hmm. I was waiting for stuff like you know being able to separate my playlists from my albums being able to organize my playlists a, li a little bit more efficiently than just a chronological or alphabetical order. Um, it, that's kind of, for me, it's a little bit disappointing because, you know, as much as they have to get new users through the door, they also have to keep exist existing subscribers from looking at other services and going, oh, this service actually has got loads of stuff that Spotify doesn't have at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I mean, that's fair. But, you know, as we were just saying, it's like the company's still rolling out globally. Yeah. I think there's always a lot of expectations from from startups that um, you know start to make inroads into um, he heading towards profit as it were yeah. but uh, and but they it's almost like um, they're held to a different standard as if wh why is there not new innovation all the time you know it's like uh, the the complaints over here about Apple and its stock price is underpriced you know and yet it's the biggest uh, company in the world it's like you can't come out with an iPad every day. You can't come out with a, an iPhone every day. And, and we're, we've become such a culture of on demand now. I need it. Why? Why don't I have it? This is ridiculous. But um, I think we all need to take a deep breath and step back and hope that these, um, you know, what you would like to see uh, occurs. What I hope is happening at, at Spotify, you know, like uh, from my own sort of point of view as a strategist is that they're, Waiting and listening, you know, seeing do users like yourself, and you know, do, 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 is there a mass need to add new what I call bells and whistles to the program, or is there no one complaining at the moment so they can look to open in more countries before they have to put money towards developing uh, new new bells and whistles for the existing customers? It, it, it's a, it's a fine balance, and yeah. as we know, they're not quite making any profit at the moment, so it, it must be difficult. Yeah. So let's give. I mean, I, I I would say, let's give them a chance. You know, yeah. um, 
that people have spoken. They, they want access to music this way. Spotify is a damn good way of doing it right now. They've got the most users. Um, and it's going to be a great test case to see if they can make it past all the hurdles and actually survive for the long run. Um, then we'll know uh, how people really want to access music. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got something I can add to that as well. Um, what I was been really really disappointed in from Spotify is their apps platform. What it's turned into is another marketing channel for musicians and labels and so on. Whereas if it had been made open in the first place, so that people could or developers could come along and then build their own concepts on what Spotify is missing. Mm -hmm. then that could have solved so many of the problems we've just talked about in one go without Spotify spending any resources on it whatsoever. Yeah. By keeping yeah. that locked up and locked down, they've missed that opportunity. And I think that's a great shame. Yeah, and I, I would totally agree with that, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, what, what, what do you use uh, yourself? Uh, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube is Sorry. <laughs> so you, you haven't got a streaming service of choice? Sometimes Deezer, sometimes Spotify, uh, but most of the time YouTube, uh, SoundCloud a lot, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and then Camp a lot. Right. So yeah. it depends <laughs> on the music. <laughs> and uh, yeah. lastly, uh, Spotify also announced the Led Zeppelin uh, are coming onto the platform. So uh, one major holdout that uh, again uh, goes onto Spotify. So you know they're becoming fewer and fewer, and um, the majority of big artists are now on Spotify. So, you know, uh, things are, are looking pretty good. Uh, one artist that actually expressed, and we can go back to what you were talking about, Dave, about the uh, sort of artist manifest of Spotify as well and, and, and their website and uh, sort of looking at, at improving that relationship as well. Uh, one artist that seem to, seems to still have some reservations is Peter Gabriel, who in an interview with uh, uh, Rolling Stone this week uh, said, he uh, said, I have a problem with Spotify. It's a great service and I'm not being able to get anything anytime, but they made a deliberate decision to get in bed with the record companies. They gave them equity position, which means they can make payments to them without uh, paying the artists. He has a fundamental et ethical, ethical, problems, ethical problem with that. So he made arguments that we've heard, we heard before, uh, but it, it was interesting to hear somebody like him who actually backed a, a streaming company, like, which was We7 uh, here mm -hmm. in the UK, uh, make these comments because I guess... Uh, I'm wondering what kind of alternative he's, he's looking at. He he says he's considering alternative uh, proposals to that model, but uh, yeah, I just wonder what the, what those those may be at this point. Um, All right, that, I mean, it, I'll try not to be angry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you can be angry. It's fun. Well, uh, I was well, angry last week. I don't know if you saw last week uh, uh, a certain musician that hates me um, wrote uh, had a Q and A interview in uh, Salon. Uh, last week, did you see that article? Like, uh, Silicon Valley is destroying all creativity, wherefore we must shut it down. Okay, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. As in, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? <laughs> it's like, um, and then he went on to just talk about um, U.S. copyright law for musicians and so on, and and it's just like, and then he attacked me uh, for no reason whatsoever, and, and it's just like, okay, so I just did a long uh, interview myself with Salon. I think it's going to post up today. Right, um, just talking about. You know, as I did in The Guardian when I um, uh, had a rebuttal to David Byrne's point of view about Spotify. First of all, why Spotify? Why is everyone attacking Spotify? Only because it's the biggest uh, possible um, uh, online streaming company at the moment. Uh, although I'd argue YouTube is bigger. And yeah. that was one of my conversations with Google. They were getting a bit concerned that when, when, when musicians of a, um, a certain age um, start attacking the Internet, you know, like, and all the, the sort of web companies that sit on the internet, um, you are, you, you it, it, it sort of really twists the, the argument from one where we can actually have a, a, a true debate to, oh, the internet is sucking up all the creativity in the world and therefore there'll be no more creativity. And, and these, these headlines, um, these articles are so uh, horribly um, sort of misinformed, if you will, it's like, how, how can we, how, okay, let me stop there. What, what I'm getting at is, if a musician has signed a contract in the past, as, I, as have I, uh, you are beholden to those contracts. And just because you don't think it's fair today, you can't go to any, any court in the country and say, it's not fair, I want to scrap my, um, my contract, and therefore I will handle my own digital sales, right? 
well, that would be great, but that's not what you signed. You signed away your rights to rights holders now who work in tandem with you to make you as successful as possible. And because there's um, these new platforms now that some people uh, who are not complaining are doing extremely well on, um, then you feel that you've been left left behind, I think. And the, the problem we've got here is that um, – the equity positions uh, ever since the, the dawn of the digital music era, um, there's been a lot of equity positions um, taken by the labels in these streaming services and other services in the past, all the way back to you know Napster, when Napster right. was trying to rebuild itself. Sure. So, But, you know, I've never known a period in the history of rock and roll where musicians have been so fascinated with the bottom line of Daniel X sold some stock today. It's like, my God, what, aren't you supposed to be making an album? You know, it's like Dan, Daniel can sell as much stock as he likes. And Peter Gabriel and David Byrne. David Byrne gave one of the greatest speeches at South by Southwest, I think it was 2008, predicting that we would be accessing music digitally more than, than physically by 2012. He got that wrong. That happened around about 2011, but it was very prescient. And, um, and now he's complaining about Spotify and streaming and and it's it's like okay he and tom york have taken their music as much as they can out of spotify it's fine you can't find atoms for peace in there um and if they choose to do that that's that's just denying their fans access to their music it's yeah. fine but if other artists who are not as big as those guys want to take all their music out of these streaming services then they definitely will get zero royalties. Yeah. There's no, no doubt about it. So I'm not suggesting that the system is nice and neat and tidy Perfect, right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, the, uh, all change, uh, especially technological change, creates great fear in society. So you either accept the opportunities of the Internet or you, um, you sit back and um, just say, how can, I use, how can I use this system to my own benefit? Yeah, you know, or just ignore it somehow, like you know the ostrich with a head in the sand moment. It's just it it isn't the internet's not going away. Um, web companies, by default, because they're built on the internet, if you will, you know, they're, they're, they're basically just software applications that allow us access to things. They could go away. You know, we saw we've seen friends to go away. We've seen MySpace go away. They come back and re sort of reformed, re renewed ways, but um it's 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 a risky enterprise and I, I'm I'm surprised that that um musicians that are complaining don't understand it. It's not easy um to build something like this on the web. It's not you know it doesn't it doesn't mean that you build something and everyone's going to use it and then give yeah. you money for using it. So it's a risky adventure. But then being a musician is risky. There's been no guarantees <laughs> sure, throughout history that you're ever ever going to make it. You know, so we, it's this horrible swings and roundabouts seesaw thing that all around. I, I all I'm trying to do honestly is keep the debate at a certain level yeah. and yeah. try not to get into too much hyperbole and too many screaming headlines that. You know, people read the headline, they don't read the article. Exactly. I mean, yeah. that's, that's certainly what we try to do on, on the show anyway. Uh, guys, I wanted to uh, get your European perspective on what's going to happen next year, because in the US, it's going to be a, bl a bloodbath, we know. You know, YouTube music and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Beats, Beats <laughs> Music Beats music uh, are going to launch in Q1, uh, suddenly competing with uh, Spotify. If Beats decides to bundle their service with headphones, it could be like... A, a very, very interesting thing that happens over there. But in Europe, we're not going to see those services, at least for the first uh, quarter or two. What do you think is going to happen in Europe in terms of consolidation, seeing that we're not going to get any new service, uh, at least for the first first few months of the year? Uh, Duncan, do you have any, any thoughts on what's going to happen? Is Spotify going to keep increasing its, its, uh, its uh, uh, user base? Yeah, basically, yes, is the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like we kind of need to have a new digital music service launch every quarter. No, otherwise, exactly. yeah, yeah. everyone gets, you know, gives up and goes home. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think Spotify is doing fine. You know, the numbers still appear to be going up in every regard. So, yeah, they'll, they'll, continue, they'll continue doing their thing. I'd like to see more Google attention over here, but that just means doing a whole load of more deals. And that's a complicated thing. So I think that's a little way away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Virginia, yeah. do you think, uh, uh, how do you feel about Deezer uh, at the moment? Do you feel like it's got momentum to uh, take on Spotify in Europe? Uh, uh, how, what's the situation in France? Do you feel like people are, are shifting? What's the sentiment? 
your end? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just because with Deezer, we are not very sure about the metrics and the okay. data. So uh, last week, they announced um, huge metrics. Yeah, uh, they, they, they really grew, grew in the last uh, year. But yeah. um, obviously, it's not exactly true. I don't know if it's correct to say that, but no, it's not true. So, well, about Deezer, really, I don't know. For me, Spotify is, is better than Deezer. It's right. the first in Europe for me. Uh, Deezer is trying to compete with Spotify, but in terms of branding and in terms of services, uh, I'm not sure that um, they can compete in Europe and they can compete everywhere in the in the world. Uh, Deezer is not uh, is not in the US, uh, is not in Japan, in Asia. Uh, they said they opened more than 120 countries. It's huge. Uh, I mean, it's really, it's huge. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, about Europe, we have Spotify, we have Deezer, we still have RDO. RDO, yeah. Yeah, it's still alive. And in the UK, we also have Napster, which is now Rhapsody yeah. uh, uh, service. And, so uh, I don't think in France we have Napster. Um, right. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, th three services in Europe. It's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I'm waiting for Beats. I'm very, very, very excited and yeah. really uh, waiting for Beats. Um, waiting for uh, YouTube too. Just I think because, YouTube is you know. gonna is gonna make it sooner than Beats, yeah, uh, just because yeah, YouTube sure. already has all the deals in place worldwide. Exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Beats. Uh, maybe in Europe. I don't know. If after June. Yeah, I'm maybe, thinking second yeah. half of the year. Yeah, after June. Yeah, exactly. So, I'd be surprised because uh, because they, they were based on Mog, which itself never really launched outside the US. So. We never know, you know, with the rights. So yeah, <laughs> with no, the we contract, never know. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if Spotify managed to get uh, labels to agree to a worldwide rollout of this new uh, free access, that's a pretty. That, that signals a bit of a shift in the in the in terms yeah. of the industry. Uh, and maybe we're, we are waiting for iTunes too. No, iTunes Radio or yeah, we're waiting for that as well. Yeah, yeah God knows so, what's going to happen with that, so. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> but we're what? having a great time with Spotify, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> so it's all right, exactly. Well, it's, yeah, iTunes, iTunes Radio is an odd one. Um, you know, I, I was using it, and then I keep I kept hearing all these ads in the stream, and it's that you you have to pay for match to get right. the ads out there, and then of course. Um, uh, I cancelled my Match account and just don't use iTunes uh, Radio because Spotify's got everything I want anyway. Yeah, exactly. That very, very complicated, crowded market over the over here. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, sure. And uh, I wanted to actually have a little bit of a break from news because we've been talking about streaming services for ages. Uh, yes. And I thought it'd be, it's quite a late one, but I thought it'd be fun to do like a last minute uh, gift buying guide for, uh, you know, anything that is hardware related or music service related uh, or uh, cool music books or anything that uh, you think it's a, it's a cool idea for, uh, for people to get uh, other musicians or people that love music and stuff like that so uh, it's a kind of a hard uh, topic to tackle but I, 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 so I'll, I'll kick it off I, I'll break the ice uh, <laughs> so one thing that I, I, I saw that I absolutely love the idea of uh, uh, it's about 300 bucks uh, is called the iLoud which is an IK multimedia speaker it's a Bluetooth speaker which is, seems really cool uh, uh, for musicians on the move which essentially doubles down as an amplifier so if you're a busky musician or if you're a musician that likes to perform in small venues you can actually hook that up to uh, instruments and all sorts of different things uh, and apparently it's got a really good quality it's got a battery uh, you can use it and you can be heard if you're busking in the street or uh, doing whatever and you can also use it as a speaker so I was kind of uh, I was like ooh that sounds very awesome and also my other recommendation would be uh, How Music Works by David Byrne. If you haven't bought it for anybody, it's out on, it's out on paperback. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's no, good. No, a big no from, from Dave. It's a good book. Yeah. Not really. Do you not enjoy it? No, I mean uh, it. Oh, so it's good. It's good. It's a it's a it's a conflicting yeah. gift gift advice. <laughs> just give it. Just buy it for your friends. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm not hypercritical of it. It's just that everything I, I I everything that David wrote. Um, I've read elsewhere in all sorts of different areas. It's just been pulled together. Yeah. It's okay. It's you know. Um, never mind. I don't want to go there. 
No, yeah. I, just, I just didn't enjoy it. No, it's a I definite. Mean, I may actually, no, I, I should be careful here. So if I re gift it, <laughs> you know, people are going to see me talking about it and go, oh, you shit. You, you just gave me a book you already had and didn't like. <laughs> I guess like it, it, it had to be like sort of a, a more, because of the audience it was trying to reach, it had to be a more wide ranging approach to the subject. So, like for people like us, a lot of the stuff might sound rehashed, but I think for somebody that yeah. would come into the field without knowing a whole lot about what was going on, I think it's quite helpful to understand what the issues are and what's what's going on. I, I'll definitely give you that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we often, I think, all of us are probably guilty of this. Is like we can spend half an hour talking about streaming music services, but we're operating in a bubble here. It's like, uh, you know, I have three children, and if they ever heard me talking like this, they'd just think I'd lost my mind. You know, it's like, <laughs> why are you going on about it? It's awesome. That's all you need to say, Dad. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, okay. <laughs> Everything's awesome. <laughs> Virginie, do you have any uh, uh, suggestions of anything you've read or cool gadgets or stuff that you think would be cool for people that like music, music tech and stuff like that? Yeah, my recommendation would be the new um, Sennheiser. Okay, it's Sennheiser, fun. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Momentum. Oh, cool. Uh, so. Black. Mm. Cool. Headphone. Cool headphone. Nice. Black. <laughs> <Zach, laughs> perfect. Yeah, we're liking we're liking the the speakers. Uh, High quality. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Device setting. Actually, um, before Duncan jumps in, sorry. Um, yeah, I didn't sure. Say, okay. What, uh, a gift to myself this year. I highly recommend if you're an um, um, if you have a turntable, you're an analog vinyl music junkie like I am. Joey Roth. I remember that name. Joey. J O E Y. R O T H, <laughs> joeyroth.com. Right. May, he makes the most beautiful, beautiful uh, porcelain and wood um, amplification subwoofer um, speakers. Wow. They're actually, I noticed that they're in the New York Times gift guide. Now, they're a little spendy. They're about a thousand dollars. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, they're about a thousand dollars. But yeah. it's, a very, it's a very compact system. And if you look online, you'll see beautiful images of it. And I, the, the sound quality is phenomenal. Um, it's really amazing. And the, 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 the powered subwoofer sits on this beautiful stainless steel uh, metal uh, amplifier. And mm -hmm. you have the controls for sub and range of the sub, which is really nice. And then you have a separate mini amplifier for the two little drivers. And mm -hmm. it's, it's the best. And even if you use it for your MP3 collection out of... Uh, uh, you know, um, a device like the iPad or your laptop. Nice. Amazing. The hardware geek in me is, uh, is uh, salivating. I'm like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, well, well, <laughs> it's a tax write-off, right? <laughs> uh, Duncan? <laughs> yeah, I think probably top of my Christmas dream list this year, and I'm probably not going to get it because it's pretty pricey, <laughs> is, uh, is actually a Swedish thing. It's the Teenage Engineering OP1. It's a tiny little synthesizer. It's about this big. Um, very, very portable, but really, really lovely design, and you get some amazing sounds out of it. Lovely, lo right. lovely bit of kit. I think nice. that's interesting. We've all sort of uh, settled on aesthetic stuff. Like, I like, <laughs> like, we're all talking about the design and the color and the, the, the quality. That, this is really important in a, in a world of cheap. You know, yes, I could have got much cheaper speakers, but I would have been less satisfied. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and these things are going to last forever, by the way. They're just uh, so amazing. I'd love to hand them down after my time. <laughs> 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 and even if the actually uh, uh, speaker itself is a, is a trash, they can always use them as a as a flower pot or something. If they're made of porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll recycle them for other use. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. And uh, yeah, I was I was actually looking at service based gifting ideas, but to be honest, it feels like Spotify would be, be quite an expensive gift to just hand in an envelope. I don't know it's, I don't know how much people would appreciate just getting a year subscription to Spotify, which is actually quite a lot of money, but uh, yeah, it's just a weird thing to do. I, I was thinking in the US it'd be quite it's quite cool to gift uh, Pandora because that's only 35 bucks, so it's a really nice sort of uh, cheap gift for the year subscription. They used to do like 3 3 month gift cards and those were like the perfect amount and it's like right. the perfect duration as well because you know, 3 months is a good amount of time for someone to get free music with no interruptions and stuff for. But I don't, I don't know if they still do that. I'm not sure. They yeah. changed their gifting options a while back. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Interesting. But, yeah, I couldn't think of any other sort of service-based stuff that I could think of uh, that is cool. I mean, the other thing is like keep an eye out uh, during Christmas for uh, synth-based uh, apps on the, for the iOS store especially. 
because mm. all the cool synths like Moog and stuff like that get big price uh, cuts during uh, the sort of Boxing Day and stuff like that. So, what you uh, could buy uh, by your friends is a subscription to Digital Music News. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> digital oh, Music my- News. Uh, sorry, digi- uh, digital music trends. Sorry. No, that'd be the wrong, that'd be the wrong site. Gold, <laughs> it's a disaster. Subscription to digital music trends. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't expect that. I don't expect that. It's it's okay. It's just it's just. Uh, <laughs> it's not even a, it's not even a subscription. It's just like a wait for people to uh, essentially contribute to the show if they feel like they want to. Uh, essentially, I don't I don't yeah. give them anything in return. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'd love to, but it's just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to. Uh, um, I, I want one more thing I wanted to mention is that uh, there was a company uh, called Music Match. It's, it's an Italian startup that does lyrics, and they have a, an app that's been downloaded uh, fifteen plus million times. It, it's it's a very very popular lyrics app, and they've launched uh, their own proprietary microphone that you can use with the application uh, that allows you to karaoke sing along to uh, the app's lyrics while they're being displayed. So. I don't know. It's an interesting one. It's quite expensive. It's like seventy pounds or something like that. Oh, so wow. it's not it's not okay. cheap. Uh, but uh, it's quite a fun thing to gift somebody if you if you are struggling and they like karaoke a lot. Uh, that'd be quite cool. Is it so? Uh, you say it's a lyric site. It's a lyrics app. So what they've done, they created a. a th- I haven't tried it out myself to be honest yet. Uh, but they have a technology that essentially skims the vocals. Uh, or masks the vocals from the tracks you have on your MP3 library, and then allows you to sing along to the lyrics. It's like an add-on feature of the application, so the mic sort of complements to that, and you can sort of perform uh, and perhaps even airstream that to your TV or whatever through uh, through the iOS device. So uh, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I haven't seen that many consumer apps working in music that have developed a device to go with the app. So uh, it's cool. Uh, yeah. And, and speaking of karaoke, actually, uh, a friend of mine has just launched a Kicks, or no, he's just successfully funded a Kickstarter to make mm. a, a card game that you play while playing karaoke that helps you <laughs> choose different songs. So you might get a card that says 80s and female singer and song right. about a breakup. And then you have to find a song that you want to sing within that. And then you win uh, as many cards as you successfully manage to get the song to match with the song, which is a great oh, wow. idea. I think that's yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, like it a... sounds great, but I honestly can't picture it. I can't picture how you would pitch that as a Kickstarter, but I, I have to check out the project. <laughs> well, he's, he's, got it, uh, he's got it successfully funded. Um, I think it's called Cario Cards with a K for cards. Right. So, yeah, if you want to look it up, you should, uh, you should definitely do that. Yeah, it's a, it, it sounds like a less intellectual version of oblique strategies by email. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, Kickstarter is bad. I've I've uh, I've been trolling through. Uh, I've seen some really amazing little music hardware projects uh, on there, especially stuff based on like uh, Arduino's or you know sort of uh, mini computers and with added hardware stuff. Uh, but to be honest, if you buy you know if you get stuff from Kickstarter, you can. If to people as an envelope, but they're not going to see it for like two years. So <laughs> it's kind of like a enjoy when you get it uh, type present. Um, uh, but uh, let's uh, close. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I have to sure. leave. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. You yeah, mentioned that. I will have, yeah, at 6.40 because I have another meeting at 7. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank so you so it, much. It's a and, pleasure to be with you. And uh, <laughs> your website is? dbth.fr and and if you speak English it's dbth.fr slash English English like that it will be in English (laughs) very straightforward well thank you so much Virginie and have a fantastic Christmas if I don't speak to you before thank you very much thank you bye bye Bye. I'll see you bye Great, and uh, so we continue by talking about uh, a Bitport. So a Bitport is uh, was a big story this week uh, that the company uh, is being handled by uh, SFX now. It's been it was acquired by SFX uh, Entertainment, which IPO'd a couple of months back, and then started acquiring companies uh, left, right, and center. Uh, so what I've done last week, they've uh, they've announced the restructuring of Bitport. Uh, they closed down the San Francisco office, essentially uh, getting rid of all the engineers who were based there. They also uh, lost about twenty employees in their Denver office, and the company is set to be focusing solely on the storefront and so abandoning some of the more development uh, focused projects that they were uh, doing beforehand. So uh, Beatport, of course, a huge community around it. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I was thinking that it was one of those uh, 
uh, sites or, or companies or services that would have needed sort of a second life uh, after people s- sort of start migrating from buying MP3s. Because of course, you know, in the dance music field, most people still buy MP3s, you know, DJs are still very big on, on buying the tracks. But is that going to last forever? Uh, Duncan, what are your thoughts on that? You know, is, is that, is that mean, a, a bad thing for Beatport, a good thing for Beatport? I mean, it always seemed to me that Beatport was just a little bit of a niche too far. I mean, there's a huge number of people who love dance music. It's, what, it's one of the most uh, passionate communities there is in the world. But it doesn't seem to me to be quite enough to keep something like this afloat. And I think that was, that was always their problem. Um, what I was a bit bothered about was I mean, there were a couple of journalists that kind of used this, this news to kind of launch this massive thing saying, oh, streaming music is dying and, and all of that. And I think that was absolute nonsense. Absolute <laughs> nonsense. Um, so I was kind of yeah that that bothered me about the whole thing. I mean, right. I, I'd, I'd love I'd love it if we lived in a world where something as niche as Beatport could work. Um, and I do think there is a, the potential for you know DJ focused stuff to work, but not DJ focused and a specific genre. It needs to be as broad as absolutely possible, um, so that as many people as possible can use the tools. That's how you get sort of kind of success. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really have much to add to that. I think Duncan no. did a great job of explaining it. I, I haven't. Uh, I, I've purchased music from Beatport in the past. You know, MP3s that I've um, really enjoyed, and, and I enjoyed using the the, the service. Uh, and I, I saw some value in in that. But you know, it's really interesting um, the niche problem. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I buy uh, I buy a lot of my vinyl, for instance, from Bleep uh, in Britain. Um, because they sell in US dollars and ship in US dollars, it's great. And then you get, you know, you get your your download uh, as soon as, as you well. purchase. Yeah. yeah, you purchase the vinyl, and before it arrives, you you download your MP3s. And and <clears throat> you know, even that, in a sense, I, I think is slightly niche. You know, but it's broader niche. Yeah. And and uh, to Duncan's point there, the idea that that the failure of a small niche company is the beginning of the end of streaming music is just like, wow, we're really not paying attention here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I know nobody's saying that uh, Beatport is failing or anything. It's just a, a question of what their focus is going to be in the future. And uh, it's one of those points, inflection points, where you think whether a company should have the courage to start cannibalizing itself. Because uh, there, there's other services like uh, a company called Pulse Locker, uh, based in California, or that they're uh, they're uh, got a streaming service that is uh, uh, based around electronic music and very much focused on providing a streaming service that works for DJs and is compatible mm-hmm. with the tools that DJs use. So you, you kind of wonder whether if Beatport had the courage to go there and actually start cannibalizing its own business model by providing a streaming service, that could be quite interesting, but I don't think they're going to do that. I mean, I think the reason why Pulse Locker is going to be or has the potential to be more successful than maybe Beatport was is because they're doing something different with technology. Right. They're making it so that... Um, the, the DJ, they're basically providing music to DJs streaming, but in a way that doesn't kind of rely on, um, you know, the traditional problems of streaming, which is like dropping an internet connection or something like that. You know, if, if, if a DJ has to deal with the fact that um, their song might drop out in the middle, they're never going to use it. So right. what, what Pulse Locker is doing very, very smartly, and I'm watching them very carefully because I think they're a really, really interesting um, startup at the moment, is... Uh, they're, they're making it so that that's not an issue for DJs at all. They're giving them unlimited music. Um, the way it works, uh, the way they <laughs> stop people just taking unlimited music, is you can only have so many tracks at a time. You have to sort of swap stuff out, and you yeah. pay more to get um, more tracks at the same time on your hard drive. Yeah. Um, and then the music software can access this folder of songs, but the user can't. It's kind of encrypted away from everything but the DJ software. Um, and of course, somebody's going to find some way to break that encryption because all encryption gets broken before too long. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a really good way of delivering something to the consumer in a way that the consumer wants it, taking away all the hassle and the fuss in the process. Um, yeah. And I think yeah, they're they're really an interesting company and one to watch. Absolutely, and, and they have a very interesting uh, rate system as well. Because uh, of course, uh, if you if you are storing the track in the locker, then the musicians get a lot more money per stream than if you're just listening to it in the cloud. So, uh, so different variables, rates, and stuff like that is quite is quite cool, uh, interesting. I just stuff. hope there's enough DJs out there to make it worthwhile, and I hope <laughs> they kind of expand their catalog beyond. Uh, just electronic music. I'm an indie DJ, and it's a nightmare to try and find stuff on yeah. DJ sites. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. I think also because they they've always had a focus on doing world worldwide deals with the labels they were working with, and so that's a strength of theirs because they are available worldwide. But at the same time, if they want to do major deals, 
that would be a problem because uh, if you want to get any mainstream catalog, then you're not going to have access to it worldwide. There's going to be some territorial restrictions in place, at least at the beginning. So The tech is great. They just need to sort the catalog. That's what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I want to, uh, one th quick thing about uh, uh, simple features that can make the difference. Uh, uh, Pandora uh, this week released an update to its iOS app, which is redesigned for, uh, for iOS 7. That's no big surprise. Most big companies that have uh, an app on iOS have redesigned it by now, so they're actually quite late to the game really uh, but they have added a feature uh, which is an alarm clock which lets, lets users wake up to their favorite Pandora station so uh, you know I didn't, th I didn't think it was anything to this news but at the same time I just kind of had the thought of bringing it up as something that is not a recommendation feature like everybody's talking about recommendation <laughs> recommendation recommendation but it's something that can really make a difference to the user as far as their their usage and uh, you know a constant usage of an application you know, of course if you wake up to a pandora station you're likely to leave it on uh, for your morning if you really like that station and so is that something that maybe other services are overlooking in terms of providing small you know additive features that could make the users this this is a classic example of something that people could build in five minutes if Spotify opened exactly, up its app yeah. platform. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's 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 what needs to happen. You need to have these open frameworks for developers to come in and just build stuff like this. You know, yeah. that could easily be somebody's my first Spotify app project. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but but they can't do it at the moment, or not in an easy, simple way. Yeah, and uh, again, look. Um, I, I talk to my students at the University of Oregon, you know, when, when we talk about apps, I try and get them to think about personal apps, like not, not something that solves, um, you know, worldwide issues, but just what certain subsets of users might find really fascinating. But you have to do a lot of um, research around that before you even jump in. And, and my only question is, I wonder how many people were clamoring for a Pandora wake me up alarm app thing because yeah. um, it's certainly of no interest whatsoever to me but then again you know i see pandora as like the equivalent of muzak it, when, when i notice people using it it's always in the background it's always what did you listen to today guys At the office here it, it streams all, all day yeah and i realized i don't I, ne I never heard anything you know i literally didn't didn't take note of what song was playing so there's a lot of issues around um uh, music apps generally, yeah. and I suppose that you know maybe um, the bigger thought I'm having is often why music. You know, why is it that music is the one that everyone's trying to either save or solve or um, make more money from? Or you know, I mean, it's just every day there's these stories about the future of music arrived again, like yeah, last, yeah. like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, I get very. Concerned. It might be because you work in the music industry. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I don't work in the music industry, though. Well, um, okay, well, you, you, you very operate aware. within the music community, then. I, I think that, uh, I mean, that's a good point you make, and we have to be careful of these bubbles. But, I mean, I, I have spent 2013 trying, um, I think I wrote a, an essay early in, in January, actually, just talking about mindfulness. Like, it's about time to, let's stop. Uh, multitasking. Let's let's stop. You know this and that and the other, and let's remember that yes, if we're talking about music uh, on a on a show like this, um, uh, digital music, then we are firmly in the bubble. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm trying to. I'm just trying to find ways though to uh, expand beyond that bubble so that we can get other commentators on uh, in that are not in this every day. And I, uh, I, I suppose my fear is that. Or maybe it, maybe it's not a fear. Maybe it's an opportunity where we could actually evaporate a lot of the white noise around it, yeah. and actually have some in, interesting discussions about what music fans actually want, what musicians need to keep creating, and and that doesn't mean we have to set up some kind of financial support system. It's you're still in the marketplace. You know, if people love your music, they're going to access it as much as they can whenever they can. If they don't love your music, they're not they're not going to go there. But um, it doesn't mean we can't keep talking about these uh, issues and trying to find great solutions that um, it'll be difficult to appease everyone, but we might get to a good place. And I think that that would be something that's built on the foundation of reminding musicians that recording uh, company contracts were not written in their favor. They were written to favor the recording companies.
And that's just how it's been throughout history, you know. So it's all about do you own your own content and keep your own copyrights? Do your own licensing and work harder on that side? Or are you quite happy to sign away your rights to a record company uh, knowing full well that you're going to end up in a in some music streaming service at some point, unless you can actually have that removed from the contract. I, I'm not sure you'd be able to do that today, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then, then you, it, you're, you're talking about uh, the fact that, you know, you'd like the app store, like, you know, the app environment to be opened up more. Do you feel like mm. there is a, it's more a question of, uh, I, I was talking to a few people about this uh, this week, actually, and talking about how there may be like a fear of uh, developers using the music in a way that is not strictly compliant with the licensing agreements that Spotify has. And maybe that might be a fear which has prevented the company from opening up its app environment further uh, in case somebody starts doing slightly more interactive things with the music that are not quite compliant to, to what they, they are allowed to do. Do you feel like that's a part of it or is it just... Yeah, a- almost certainly. I mean, the, the point I'm basically making is that, um, that it's, it's often the licensing that holds all of this stuff back. Right. Uh, the technology has been there for you know, probably more than a decade now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's, and it's just what, what I think Spotify should really be focusing its energies on is pushing that. They've got this great relationship with the with the licensing people, and they should be really pushing that relationship as far as it can go. And I think, well, today we've actually seen a huge victory on that front yes. when it comes to getting people, you know, to classifying tablets as more like PCs, the stuff that we were talking about earlier. Um, I think that's a huge victory on that front, about being more sensible with licensing um, and evolving it over time. And I think that by doing that more and by, by pushing that further, Spotify can really, really capitalize on its position. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I want to end with uh, uh, by talking about uh, cross-platform uh, services, so services that allow you to access uh, data or uh, tracks from different services at the same time. So first, first up, we had a story about uh, Soundwave, which is an, uh, a Dublin-based uh, an Irish startup that uh, uh, has had a, a lot of backing from Apple in the last uh, few months uh, since they launched. Uh, and they are essentially a music recommendation application that uh, gathers uh, data from uh, your plays on uh, the iOS device itself. Uh, uh, you know, if you're playing music from from iTunes, uh, from uh, Spotify, uh, I think they have audio integration, and now they've also integrated the, the, uh, YouTube as part of the offering. So they are able to tell if you're playing a YouTube video on your phone, and then they can uh, essentially put that in their database and allow you to share that with your friends. And uh, also as part of the sharing, of course, uh, you are able to also access uh, some of those tracks uh, if you're signed into the into your specific music service uh, uh, quite easily. So that's, that's a pretty cool uh, way of doing that. And it's also uh, got geolocation components, so you can track where people are listening uh, to what. Uh, so they've, they've added the YouTube component uh, and there's another platform that launched uh, this week. Uh, well, it didn't launch this week, but they had a big uh, sort of PR uh, push this week called uh, 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 bop.fm, uh, which I, I just interviewed the founder actually uh, about an hour ago uh, for the other show uh, going out this week. Um, and they aggregate uh, different uh, data from different services, including uh, Deezer, uh, Spotify, uh, I think Audio and uh, YouTube and SoundCloud. And so you can do a search. It's a bit like, uh, it's, it's a, a very similar to Tomahawk that we've covered uh, before in the past, but in a, in a com- sort of commercial uh, 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 plane, essentially, and allow you to search for a track and then you can access that track from uh, different services, uh, uh, regardless of who you subscribe with. You can still access that track uh, without getting errors or weird links or stuff like that. So I wanted to ask you guys, you know, do you feel like next year is going to be really the year where we see the explosion of these uh, uh, th- this services that allow you to communicate with other people about music you listen to in a usually siloed environment of, of a streaming service or do you think people just don't care and it's just a very small minority that is going to be really excited about doing this kind of stuff and the mainstream is just going to be quite content with what they have and not look for any other solutions uh, D- Dave? Um, it's quite fascinating I'm just listening to you going through that giant list of um, of music services that can all be aggregated together, you know, and yeah. it's like, my God, I don't know if I've got time in my day to think, even <laughs> think about that. Never mind, do it. Um, but um, that, that's a problem, right? It is a problem, yes. Um, and and I, rather than talk about the benefits of such services, um, a couple of thoughts I had is one, uh, I really don't like to predict anything uh, in this space because um, something happens literally every week. Yeah, uh, sure, if, of course. Sometimes every other day. Um, and it would be a fool's errand to suggest that we know what's going to be coming in oh, 2015. Sure. Yeah. So, with having said that, I, I, I think that um, uh, to simplify uh, the debate slightly would be, 
I, I believe the one piece missing in a lot of these services generally is curation. Um, and by that, I mean real, really strong filtering by, by humans, not algorithms and not, oh, you, you watch this, therefore, sorry, you listen to this on YouTube and therefore we've added it to your stack and that you may also like this and this and this. Um, I, I really feel, and, and I don't think this is uh, nostalgic, it may have a, uh, there may be a tinge of nostalgia here, but, you know, when John Peel was alive and, and he made it, um, um, every effort to listen to every single CD and back in the day, every vinyl album that was sent to him. He, he, he said that he, he, he listened to everything that was sent to him and then he filtered it down thinking, oh, well, my audience would love that and my audience would love this, you know. Um, that, that sort of DJ effect um, has tried, to, I think companies have tried to replace it through algorithms. Uh, obviously, Pandora with its... Um, its genome um, 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 business, whatever they call it now, I forget it. The Music Genome Project, project was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, it, and it's really I find that quite unhealthy, actually. Um, if I put Gang of Four in and it plays a couple of Gang of Four songs, and then it starts playing like things that you would not describe as remotely music, never mind close to Gang of Four, <laughs> and it's just like wow. What just happened? You have to, you, you're hitting the off button as fast as you can. Um, and I think that just, that just says it, it, it's not an exact science. Um, perhaps all, all of these um, uh, new uh, startups you're talking about here are finding really much better ways to, to tie these technological advances in... Um, With real uh, you, people. Yes. I, 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 I think we mustn't always consider digital the answer when analog may be the answer and whereas you know humans are analog well the technological beings but i won't get into that but they're analog basically you know we, we listen we have our sensory um, um, abilities and every human being on the planet has a different version uh in their mind of a song they hear uh, honestly you know it's like us three here today we could play a track and I may think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and you two are going, meh, mm, must be good. No, I don't, I don't think so. So it's really hard uh, in technology to make make uh, an accurate prediction of what I might like. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, that's a bit of a long-winded way of trying to be brief. But um, What you just described there is kind of sorted out in one go by a Spotify playlist, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. incredibly easily shareable. You can put any, almost any song in the world on it, and then almost anyone in the world, well, in fifty five countries, can listen yeah. to it. I'm yeah. sure you know if John Peel was right. around today, he'd be making Spotify playlists. I absolutely agree. I, I mean, I didn't want to. I don't want to. Um, there's been a lot of criticism of me, um, um, sort of talking about Spotify. I, I was trying, to, <laughs> I was trying to be careful there. But let's let's say, let me just say it. It's the best service. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, or, I mean, or a YouTube playlist, or a, or a something else playlist. But I guess, I guess, I'm talking about the concept of playlists in general. I mean, that's that's what yeah. the mix is today. It's a playlist. But yeah, I guess, like, I guess, what the and, problem you have is that not everybody's on the same service. So I guess yeah. what some of those companies are trying to do is to allow you to cross promote mm -hmm. uh, or cross, uh, you know, make make the playlist cross compatible. If somebody is on Deezer and you're on Spotify, and then there's communication yeah. issues. It goes back to Duncan's point throughout this, this discussion this evening um, um, of open sourcing things, and somebody would have built that by now. You don't need third-party companies to deliver it to all the music services. It would be so great if it was built in already to Spotify. Yeah. But you're right, the version that's there now, they have over 1.5 billion playlists. Um, I'm finding so much amazing music from following my peers in Spotify, um, and then just um, you know dragging certain tracks uh, to my own playlist, and then digging deeper into how many albums have these artists put out, and you know they're new to me. Yeah. And I'm a guy who keeps up on music, and, and I, I found just hundreds of, of new acts that I'd kind of heard of and not paid attention to. And then when you hear it, of course, bang, um, there you are. So yes, uh, I'm trying not. To, I'm certainly not an apologist for. Spotify in terms of the deals it's made with the labels and, and how um, musicians feel a bit gypped there. But uh, again, I, I can only say, well, there are contracts in place. And I do know, you know, when Gang of Four uh, was the title track in Marie Antoinette, um, the movie Marie Antoinette, uh, Sophia Coppola's movie, 
that was a big break for us again, you know, after all these years. And, and yet 50% of all the income was taken off the top because it was all licensed. Yeah. And r record deals have that written in, you know, we'll get you a TV ad, 50% for the label, you share 50%. Yeah. And, now, and now, of course, as those income streams have been thinning, that feels painful if you're getting a check for twenty dollars. That's just it's it's not. I I I I feel for the musicians, but it's the it's the marketplace. Unfortunately, we're we're in we're in business, whether we like it or not. Yeah, there's one company that I, th I think is interesting on this front, uh, Playlist.net, which if it started integrating more services within, like as as far as accessibility goes, I mean, it's going to be a huge work on their <coughs> part to actually. Uh, curate the metadata so that it's available cross platform and works in different services. But if you were ab able to access playlist.net and have access to all those playlists, but even if you were on a different service like Spotify, that could be a huge win for that company. Uh, but then again, it's a company that adapters, you know, has already had a huge growth and might be able to integrate other services within it rather than starting as a cross platform service mm -hmm. to create a user base later. So it's a very mm -hmm. different uh, type of approach. So sort of build I'm, it, I'm, and they will come, or we already have users, and we're just building on top of that. Yeah. I, 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 again, at the back of my mind, as you're talking there, I'm just thinking that we're. we're I, I sense there's a danger of cannibalization here amongst all of these services. You know, there's only one set um, of um, uh, one set's the wrong word. The the, the 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 catalogs that are available are finite, yeah. and and most of the Successful streaming companies have already got access to them through licensing from the label system. So that's it. it's just like a churn. You know, you can the churn is actually amongst the the user choosing which service you want to use. And you know, Pandora has less um, uh, artists than Spotify has, and and Audio maybe has the same as Spotify, and so on. And and then there's these third party things you're talking about now coming in to help us navigate and manage the actual catalogs. But I think at some point we society is going to have to decide. It's like who are the winners in this race? You know, yeah. it's like Amazon and books. Amazon's clearly the winner. Uh, even Walmart can't come close to it in online um, shopping, for instance. Um, so you, the user, uh, which I hate to, it's a bad term, but the music fan, let's call them music fans, they know where to get their music. Um, and I think we're going to have to see some falling out of some services to make the landscape a little clearer. And then they'll vote with their dollars and pounds and euros and, you know, the winner will win. I think, uh, I I think they already are. Yes, I, I I didn't want to quite go there because that feels a little bit like a prediction. But you're right. Uh, I mean, we're we're seeing it settle down. Uh, just today, we've talked about Beats, Spotify, and YouTube. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it, what what really worries me about this? Sorry to cut you off. Um, no, no. What what really worries me about this is actually part of the news today. We didn't really discuss this earlier, but the Led Zepp uh, thing for Spotify isn't exclusive. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, that really, really, really worries me. Um, and I've got an uh, opinion piece that's uh, going up online about this by the time this show goes out, probably. So you can look it up. But it's, it, it really, really concerns me, the idea that consumers are going to have to start paying perhaps more than one subscription to get all of the artists that they want. You know, if Beats comes along and then it pays, I don't know, or maybe even it doesn't pay. Maybe Dr. Dre just releases his new record exclusively on Beats. That's yeah. going to really hurt Spotify. Um, yeah. And it really, really hurts the consumers as well. And I think that Spotify is really opening a very, very dangerous Pandora's box by um, by making the Led Zepp thing exclusive. I really, yeah. really think that's a that's going to be a problem for consumers. The comp competition between streaming services should be about technology, not about content. I I, to I totally agree. And I, I think that's a good point because one thing that uh, I've been thinking about Beats is as it's part of the Universal Records empire. Mm -hmm. You know, Jimmy Iovine's involved and, um, um, you know, yes, okay, all right, so Spotify, you, you've decided to keep Led Zeppelin to yourself. Well, how about all Universal uh, uh, Records artists yeah. are, are kind of nudged gently into being, you'll only be on beats, right? 
Uh, so now, now <laughs> yeah, you know, your contract's up for renewal. Let's let's have a sit down here. Um, and then this and very I, fragile ecosystem we've built suddenly all comes tumbling down. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I, I, it's crazy. Um, and so this is. A and great, wasn't it the Warner guy that uh, the, the owner of Warner that invested in in Deezer recently? Or I, I might be mistaken. I, I would need to check up on that. But there was I, a, I, there was a one. Of, yeah, well, the the big owner of Warner had also invested in one of the big streaming services. Uh, yeah, yeah, and so that 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 really really concerns me right now um, yeah. about streaming music. I mean, we're we're seeing it very much in television at the moment in Britain, where you know Netflix and Love Film and other people, Amazon is starting to get into it as well, and they're even starting to commission their own content that they'll have uh, you know exclusively. If a if a major streaming service paid for the next U two album to be made, then they get it exclusively. That's a really and, and then none of their competitors will ever get it because they own all of the rights. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that's yeah. really really hurting um, the adoption of streaming TV in Britain right now, and I would hate to see the same thing happen to music. Yeah. I agree. Uh, actually, that reminds me of one more Christmas gift idea. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> Chromecast. Uh, yeah, we don't have uh, we, we have it here. Oh. It's kind of a oh. bit of a price. It's available uh, now on Amazon for the first yeah. time uh, this week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's forty pounds, which is around sixty five seventy dollars. I'll send it you. It's a bit steep, but you know. <laughs> Don't I really, I want I want to try it out. I don't have an Android device though, so it's it's kind of defeats the point a little bit. Um, you don't you don't I need, need an Nexus. Well, okay, you don't I'm need a... it. You can you can just use Chrome. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't have a TV at the moment, so it's completely useless to me. Well, I I, I have a I have a TV because you know uh, I I don't have cable television, so right, I don't yeah, watch yeah. television uh, technically. I I've got my Netflix account and all that. Uh, the the Chromecast is just a beautiful uh, device. It's basically Google TV, literally uh, dumbed down to its constituent parts into an HDMI plugin. It's it looks for your wireless in your house, and then you create a Chromecast um, wireless name. So mine. Is man cave, you know, because um, <laughs> <laughs> some kind of Neanderthal. Um, um, and um, bingo, everything you bring up on the iPad, like HBO Go, for instance, um, it just looks amazing. Uh, the quality of the uh, HD uh, quality on my TV looks better than Comcast cable, for oh. instance. So, have to get um, that. so have I've got to get two that. now in two different parts of the house so the kids can mess around on one, and I've got my own personal one. And $35 over here. Yeah, it's nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, uh, and uh, so something, Andrew. Sorry, I just wanted to. Well, it's almost nothing. Yeah, you know, for, for for a device, it's almost nothing. Uh, uh, I wanted to. Uh, sorry, just just correct myself. Yeah, it was uh, Deezer that got a 130 million round of funding led by Warner Music Group's owner uh, Len Blattenvik. I can't pronounce his name, but yeah, uh, I was sort of correcting there. But I just wanted to to make sure that uh, that was. Yeah. Uh, told uh, and finally i just wanted to plug uh, your stuff guys uh, so uh, duncan you got your site which is duncangear.com uh, yep. which is a d u n c a n g e e r e.com uh, and uh, you, you got a great blog uh, there's a fantastic uh, looking up gift, gift guide on there well, while we're in the <laughs> while we're in the christmas gifting theme uh, that that's really cool if uh, you know anybody that likes uh, sky and uh, 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 space, space and stuff like that and weather yeah. and so on and things yeah it's it's yeah. the kind of project i've launched most recently it's a it's a site that focuses on yeah the sky and space and weather so it's news but also sort of more creative stuff it's it's a lovely blend of sort of science and arts it's it's, it's lovely. I'm really enjoying doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's and uh, Dave, uh, uh, your end. Uh, uh, what site do you do you want to plug, if any? You know, uh, well, I've only really got two. Uh, one is the business blog, as you know, um, uh, north.com. So right. north, north, as in direction. dot com slash thinking. Uh, that's that's my area of the company uh, where I write a lot of essays. Uh, probably uh, similar to what Duncan's saying, in sort of a very broad. Um, shallow polymath way, as I call it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and IamDaveAllen.com is my personal site, uh, which I don't necessarily keep too often. But I, you know, the history of all my writing is there. So if anyone's interested in long reads, as it were, um, that's where I put things. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all fine. I, you know, I'm just plowing away out here, um, fighting off the the, the um, slings and arrows of. Uh, musicians who find me on the wrong side of the fence but i'm, I'm sorry i'm on the, the societal side of the fence and uh, yeah. I, I like to see 
because of my because of my work at North here, um, it's all about user behavior. And once you once you look at what users want, it, it, you can't get them to change course to come back to, hey, don't go over there, please come over here, you know. And also uh, something I press is that uh, we don't live in a digital world and an analog world, you know. Yeah. It's just all one world, and um, we move seamlessly from talking right now. Here we are using this fantastic technology to see and hear and, and discuss these things over the internet. And then I can go back to messing around with this, this synthesizer right here if I want to know. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> or I can do both right now. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, as always, 2014 will be a, a fascination for me of, of what uh, musicians, uh, when will they come around to understanding that the opportunities are vast and they're not a special subset of society that's been hammered by the internet. You know, the internet has, has upended many businesses, not just music. So um, it's trying to think outside that bubble. It's like, come on, guys, this is what society says. Yes, if Spotify goes away, it will be immediately replaced by another well-funded streaming service. Yeah. Um, because that's the the only way we can get music across the internet currently um, is via these the MP3 streaming, you know, over broadband. And if there's a new technology that comes along in the middle of 2014 that fixes that, then everyone will be scrambling to get on board there. So it's never ending. Like yeah. I said, the internet's here to stay. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, guys, for your time. Uh, it was really good fun having you on. And uh, have a fantastic Christmas if I don't uh, see you uh, or speak to you before which I Thank probably you. won't. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a very uh, spread out show with, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> from, from the West Coast to Paris to uh, Sweden. It was uh, definitely an uh, international show. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, again, the site is digitalmusictrans.com. You can find all the shows there. Uh, in January, we're going to uh, start doing a lot more. There's going to be new shows coming out, uh, breaking news. Uh, I'm going to do everything in line. So I'm going to be able to produce shows live instead of, uh, you know, after finishing this, having to spend about five hours on Final Cut Pro trying to get it together. <laughs> which is going to be very much uh, a relief uh, for me uh, thanks so much for listening uh, have a great week and until next time and that's all for this week I really hope you enjoyed the show check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter